When I knew I was fast, I think that for me personally, it wasn't until I got to the University of Miami in 2001-ish. Uh, my mom will tell the story of me starting to run faster than the family German Shepherd, and my father will tell you the story of me being at the Carnegie Science Center and starting to run faster than a Flojo hologram. But for me personally, I think it was 2001-ish, or when I got the scholarship to go to the University of Miami. I think I started to dream of being an Olympian when I was a child, but I didn't really know or recognize that. If you had asked me the question before I found a small little thing and a project that I did in third grade where I had Olympic medals on and I was a runner, um, I would, I would, t I don't even, I didn't even remember it until I saw that. So I think that I didn't really start to internalize the idea of the possibility of being an Olympian until I got to the University of Miami and realized that, you know, kind of the next step was to look toward professional sports. I wasn't sure until I crossed the finish line I saw my name in that third place position that I was going to the Olympic Games the first time in 2004. I think the thing that was really cool was that I hadn't thought that, you know, I, I didn't think that there was everything on the line in that moment. Of course I was very nervous, it was the Olympic trials and there was pressure, but at the same time I, I hadn't had those real goals and aspirations for such a long period of time that I was really excited to come across that line. And, and know that I had made myself a name among some of the best names in the sport at that time period by getting that third place position. In 2004, at just age 20, I was able to make it to the podium. And as I went through each round, I think I was thinking, do the best you can, do the best you can, Lauren. And one of the things my father said, you know, before the finals was, you know it doesn't matter what happens out there tomorrow, that I love you no matter what, and that we're, you've already made us so proud. In, in making it to this point that don't put the pressure on yourself to feel like you have to do this for us. We are proud of you no matter what. You're my daughter no matter what. And I think that's what really helped. My, my dad did a really good job of putting me at ease despite you know the idea that he was in the hospital and that these things had happened and he was in an unfortunate situation. He said, don't worry, I'll be out, I'll be fine. Uh, you go out there, you run your heart out. Everything's gonna be great. So from that aspect, he did kind of the same thing to calm me that he did right before the 100 meter final to make sure that I, I wasn't gonna be thinking about that as I stepped to the, the, the starting line. Getting the silver medal was a joy for me in that moment in 2004. I think, you know, some years later, as you start to learn more about the sport and, uh, you know, other people's ideas kind of get entangled into your mind and, you know, they, they kind of push what they think on you. It kind of, you know, maybe corrupts a little bit. The, the purity of what I was thinking of in 2004. And so then, I think maybe, you know, four or five years down the road, I started to maybe feel like I didn't get a gold medal versus, you know, having earned the silver medal. But in that moment in 2004, I was very excited about it. I think one of the coolest thing of, things about the Olympic experience is the idea that you have all these people in your life that you know, come up at the at kind of the weirdest times or, you know, just when just when they know that you need them. And so, like I said, the chemistry was a little bit off for the relay. They were all wonderful girls, and so we were kind of sticking together in that moment. Uh, we did get behind the, the stage or, you know, once it was all said and done and, and remember to pray. And so in those moments, that's when you remember, like, that I don't, I don't do this just to please other people or to you know represent to represent America or to get the gold medal. I do this for the Lord. This is my platform to be able to serve the Lord. And one thing I do remember afterward was getting back to the village and seeing my friend Cyan Richards Ross. And the first thing she said to me, instead of saying, "Oh man, what happened?" or anything like that, she said, um, "Come here, let me pray for you." <laughs> it was just that simple. Uh, and so you see God pop up at these little times and uh, just that little inkling from here and there, everyone's dropping a little nugget for you to remind you that this is not the biggest thing. Though you feel very low right now that you will get through this.